Hi everyone, my name is Marinko Spasovic and in this video I will show you how to handle uploading large files in ASP.NET Core. I will talk about why using byte array or memory stream can be problematic and discuss the benefits of using streams instead. By leveraging streams, we can significantly improve the performance and scalability of our application when handling large files. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps the channel a lot and supports my work as well. That said, let's move on with the video. Streams are generally better than using byte array or memory stream when handling large files for several reasons. First, streams reduce memory usage a lot. With byte array or memory stream, the entire file is loaded into memory before processing, potentially causing problems such as performance issues or memory errors, particularly with large files. In contrast, streams process the file in blocks, enabling more efficient memory management. Secondly, using streams can also improve processing speed by allowing for simultaneous reading and writing of the file. This means the application can start processing the file faster and finish more efficiently. Finally, using streams also benefits by enabling the direct streaming of large files over the network. Streams transmit data in blocks reducing latency and improving transmission performance. Now that we know why I will use streams in this video, let's start with the configuration first. I need to configure Casserl in the program CS file to allow the upload of large files. For that, I will use the builder.webhost property and call the configure Casserl method to prepare a configuration. Here, I will use the server options parameter and call the limits and then the max request body size property to set the limit to the maximum long value. It is worth noting that by setting the max request body size to long max value allows the upload of files of any size. We can configure this according to our needs and requirements, so you should be careful with this. Also, instead of globally increasing the request limit size, I can use the request size limit attribute with size in bytes as an argument to specifically increase the request size limit for the specific action only. Now, just quickly, I would like to let you know about our ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book that you can use to master all the best practices to create powerful production ready web APIs. Also, check out our Blazor course to create client C apps without using JavaScript. The links are in the description below. Okay. Let's continue here and create a new class inside the DTO folder called File Upload Summary to handle the response for the file upload post request. So I need a public int total files uploaded property to count the number of files I uploaded. Then I need the string property named total size uploaded. Also, I need the list string property named file paths. Finally, I will add another list string property for the not uploaded files because I want to return the message to the user about the files that haven't been uploaded. Now, with this DTO prepared, I need two custom attributes in the utilities folder to validate the content type of the incoming files and also to prevent model validation. So, let's create here a new class and name it multipart form data attribute. First, I will use here the attribute usage attribute to make sure that this custom attribute can be used only on methods and classes. Then, let's use the action filter attribute as a base class. Because I inherit from this base class, I can override the on action executing method to execute any logic before the action inside the controller executes. Here, I will extract the request using the context.httpContext.request property and then I will apply a simple check to make sure that content type header is correct and starts with the multipart form data. If this is true, I will simply exit the method. On the other hand, I will set the context result to new status code result 
with the 450 unsupported media type. Okay, that's the first attribute, and let's create another one. And name it disable form value model binding attribute. There is nothing special going on here. I have to disable the model validation because I don't want model binders to inspect the body and fetch it into memory or onto disk. This would beat the purpose of using streams. Now, let's take a look at controller action that uses streams to upload large files. Here, you see an action method with the HTTP POST attribute that specifies the upload endpoint. It also has a custom action filter attribute, multipart form data, which ensures that the incoming request has the correct content type of multipart form data. Of course, I call the disable form value model binding filter to disable model validation. The method uses the upload file async method from the file service to upload the file. The upload file async method takes in the request body stream and content type. Finally, the method returns a 201 creator result with an file upload summary object that contains information about the uploaded file. Now, the main thing comes into play the file service class. Here, you can see this class inherits from the iFile service interface, and I have an empty method that I call from my controller and two private helper methods that I'm about to use. So, let's start with the implementation. First, I will create two private fields here. The first one will be a constant string named upload directory and I will assign a name of the directory here. Now, the second one will be the private read only field of the list string type and I will name it allowed extensions. And here I will provide a list of extensions that I allow for upload. Okay. Now, let's move on inside the upload file async methods body. Here, I will create a file count variable and initialize it with zero. I need another one named total size in bytes and I will set this variable to zero as well. Then, I need a boundary here, which is a unique boundary that is identified in the HTTP request headers. It is used to separate the data submitted with the request. And to extract the boundary, I will call a new getBoundary method and use the media type header value.parse method to parse the content type as an argument. Now let's generate this method. Let's return a string here. And then in this method, I will extract the boundary from the media type header value by calling the header utilities class and then the remove quotes method to remove quotes from the specified input. And for the input, I will provide the media type header value dot boundary property. And let's use the value property to extract the boundary. Now, I will simply check the extracted boundary. And if I don't have it, I will show an invalidate exception. And in another case, I will return this boundary. Okay, with this done, I can return to my main method. Here, I need a multipart reader to read multiple files from the stream. And I have to provide the boundary and the file stream as a constructor arguments. Also, I need a section to store each section from a multipart reader. And for that, I will call the read next section async method. Now, I will add two variables here to help me with the final response for the file paths and not uploaded files. And then I will process the file upload logic as long as the section is not null. The first thing I will do is convert the section into a file section using the as file section method. Next, if that file section is not null, I want to use the result variable and store the result of the save file async method that accepts a file section, file paths, and not uploaded files as parameters. I will generate this method in a minute, but as you can see, it will process the file, return the size of the file, and populate the file paths and not uploaded files collections if needed. Then, if a result is greater than zero, 
I will add the result to a total size of bytes and increase the number of files. After I'm done with saving the file, I can read another section from the multipart reader using the read next section async method. Ok, at this point, let's generate the save file async method. The first thing I want to do here is to extract the extension using the path get extension method where I will pass the file name from the file section parameter. Then I can check the extension for the allowed extensions. And if it doesn't exist inside the predefined collection, I populate the not uploaded files collection and return zero. On the other hand, let's create a directory here using the upload directory field and also create a file path with the path.combine method where I pass the name of the directory and the file name. Now I can create a new stream inside the using directive with the file stream class with all the needed arguments. After the stream is created, I will use the file section dot file stream property to get the file stream from the body and call the copy to async method to asynchronously read the bytes from the current stream and write them to another stream. After that, I will simply populate the file paths collection and return the length of the stream. As you can see, I'm using my private method to help me with the path. Now, all I need to do in the main method is to return the result. Again, I'm using my private helper method to convert the size to a string. Awesome. With all this implemented, I can test the logic. So, I have prepared Postman request, and here I need to select the form data option and add two key value pairs where the key will be the name of the file and the value will be the file itself. Postman will automatically set the content type header to multipart form data with the boundary with some value. Now, after I send the request, you can see the response. The response shows the total number of files uploaded, the total size of the files and the paths of the uploaded files. Additionally, there is a list of files that were not uploaded due to not being allowed. Awesome. Well, as you saw, uploading large files can be a challenging task, but utilizing streams can greatly simplify the process. With streams, we can efficiently read and write data in small chunks, minimizing memory usage and allowing us to handle large files without performance issues. That's it. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.